Swift blockchain. One of the things I didn't research so much with Swift blockchain was this node capital. And I want to show you this node capital because it now brings a Rothschild into play here. Okay. So this is Swift. And Swift tells you here, uh, it's a blockchain platform that allows the users to transact in cryptocurrencies. Established in 2017, the company has the backing of renowned investors, Draper Dragon and Node Capital. And when I went to look into Node Capital here, can you guys see this Node Capital? I know it's kind of hard because they picked the worst colors. Oh, we can see it. Okay, so one thing to note, Node Capital in their portfolio, they have XLR, okay? And there's some other cryptocurrencies here, which I'm sure people might know of. But XLR sticks out to me because of connection to XRP. But if we look at the team here, um, these guys, the two co-founders are uh, former eToro guys. But the guy we're going to focus on here is Ben Rothschild. Uh, let's look at Mr. Rothschild's uh, bio here. With seven years of experience as a managing director in a prominent family office. <laughs> you don't say, right? <laughs> prominent family office. I wonder what office that is. Um, ben offers deep expertise in investment strategy and financial management. As a seasoned tech investor and a board member, Ben's network, particularly within the Israeli tech ecosystem, is instrumental in identifying and nurturing promising opportunities. So along with the Draper, um, co-owner in Swift is a Rothschild um, who happens to be a venture partner on the board of Node Capital, okay? Um, it also furthers connects um, XLR, and we've been through XLR and showed you how XLR is co-owned by uh, Coinbase Ventures and Polychain Capital, all of which are I, I've connected to Draper on various occasions through like his son, and we know he's a co-owner of um, Coinbase. So, um, and those are also coincidentally the same owners we saw for that um, Indian exchange coin DCX, right? So so it, it connects to a lot of stuff, but I just wanted to point out this Rothschild uh, because the Rothschilds are definitely connected to XRP. If I bring up this thing, let me see. Let me see. I think I need to share a different screen to bring this up. From a little while back, this is uh, Edmund D. Rothschild's portfolio, uh, March uh, 31st, 2018. Um, I've checked like more recent documents, but this is the first um, mention of uh, Ripple being owned by, or partially owned, I should say, by a Rothschild. If we go ahead and search in this document for Ripple, you see here, um, SBI Holdings, which I'm sure you guys have heard before, right, on, on Max's channel. Uh, SBI Holdings, they're the ones who are holding it for this Rothschild. Uh, the underlying equity rallied over blah, 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 blah. But SBI owns a 8.7% stake in Ripple's XRP. So very interesting and very interesting that it's, in XRP as opposed to like in just Ripple that is actually in like XRP. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting um, that that even further drives home the point um, that you see this Rothschild involved with uh, XLR because now I want to show you something here on X, we'll, we'll pull it up. The Mo you know? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is Andrew Sanders. That's the guy, uh, Saunders. I uh, 
interviewed from scale really cool really cool guy i definitely suggest everybody go check out that interview but i want to i want to scroll down and show you guys some stuff from um evmos and which evmos and xlr are teaming up together to be a side chain for xrp so very interesting there and this will be coming from uh david schwartz but i just want to point out in the early days, we celebrated every exchange listing. That is not an XRP ledger thing, right? People who hold tokens on, on, on exchanges, they're not using the ledger, but they're using XRP. And I'm hoping that we can see the XRP LEV on the side chain. Oh, announcement, it has a name. I wanted to call it Niobium, I lost. It is called the XRP LEVM sidechain. I know that's what everybody was calling it anyway, but that is actually its name. That is a bona fide announcement, I'm not lying. It is actually going to be called the XRP LEVM sidechain. I want you to think of that as a true part of the XRP ecosystem. XRP will be its native token, and it will be able to address that long tail of, of, of uh, use cases. And if we have asset portability, I think we should think, I hope we can think of it as part of the XRP ecosystem. And the uh, XRP is not just the XRP ledger. Maybe that's too much to ask. So Axelar is going to provide the bridge for the native token. Anybody who wants to can provide other bridges for other tokens, but you do have to have one bridge for the native token, the gas token. That's going to be provided by Axelar. It's going to use a proof of authority consensus. Um, it'll have a block explorer, and you'll be able to use you know, traditional EVM wallets. Uh, it will be a traditional EVM chain. One of the advantages of being able to launch projects on the EVM sidechain is the development cycle is much faster. So it took, what, two years to bring AMMs onto the XRP ledger? Let's say somebody said, hey, I want to do securities derivatives with leverage trading and you know some other weird thing on it, over collateralization, blah, blah, blah. You could maybe launch that on the XRP ledger in a year. You could launch that on an EVM sidechain in probably two months. And it's much So security derivatives trading, <laughs> um, saying that it would take you know, a long time would take over a year or more to do on XRP, um, but on a side chain, it would take two months. So they want to make sure that they're capturing this money. So they provided this as a solution using XLR. So it's no coincidence that they used XLR because we just showed you here how a Rothschild has it in their portfolio, right? Um, this node capital. And we showed you how Node Capital is part owner of Swift. So it's it kind of goes all full circle here, right? Um, and we just showed you in this other in that other slide how um, a Rothschild owned 8.7% of XRP tokens. So very um, or of of Ripple's XRP. So very, very interesting. Again, we see that connection here with uh, David Schwartz, if we go back to that. Sorry, it's moving kind of slow on me. You know, as you're pulling it up, I just want to state this, you know, you and I have covered these connections with quite a few things, but a lot of times it's like in the middle of it, it, it goes back to Axelar. And, you know, it's just like, I, I, I feel Axelar doesn't get mentioned enough and I, I don't, I don't cover Axelar on a daily, but I do cover it every now and then. And I know you, I use this statement a lot about, you know, what tokens and coins are going to be that utility in motion. But I mean, my God, how many references do we have already when it comes to Axelar and, and you know, it being literally used the utility. I mean, here's a visual and I'll full screen it for you. Cause I know that um, Rue was going to get back into this, but I mean, Boom, there you go. And it's such an underrated, you know, project that just doesn't get enough mention, really, you know. You could maybe launch that on the XRP ledger in a year. You could launch that on an EVM sidechain in probably two months. And it's much easier to find developers. So we have to be realistic. Um, for that long, that long tail of projects, um, if we don't have a place inside our ecosystem for those projects to go, they're just they're gonna go elsewhere. Um, and so we should uh, you know, we should be inclusive. So and and um, I think I have another, I have an article on that just to kind of drive things home. Now, bringing this again, kind of back to Swift, 2016, okay? Mizuho and SBI 
trial cross-border payments using utilizing blockchain technology with the first collaborative project with the R3 consortium in Japan. Okay. And I think we touched on this once before, but yeah, you and I did here. a collaboration about this. Okay. So, so you can see in here that ripple is mentioned here with SBI and just to get you guys back to Swift, we can see, and, and, and we just talked, talked about Mizuho Bank. We can see here in 2018, which is like maybe maybe like a couple years later, one of the first people that Swift reached out to was Mizuho Bank, right? So all of that kind of comes right back home. Yeah, Swift. remember what it was? It was Mizuho Bank and Swift, and then the common ground was jasmine for example but um it was mizuho bank swift i remember doing that collaboration that was that was a few months ago yep and now we have another collaboration here kind of coming back with xrp and xlr and just to kind of further drive that home let's let's uh bring up some of xlr's um some of XLR's um, funders. So you guys know, um, we just got through talking about how uh, XLR and EV mills are gonna be used for a side chain for um, XRP. Well, if we go and look at um, Circle, and that's USDC, if we go and look at Circle's um, portfolio, right? They have a very small cryptocurrency portfolio. They don't have too many uh, that are active right now. But of the like 12 that are active, one of which is EVMOS. Look at that, right? So if we're thinking that XRP is going to be what we think it's going to be, and it's going to be used to use, uh, move money like we think it's going to be used to move money, well, the digital dollar is having EVMOS you know, the digital, the quote unquote digital dollar and member of the World Economic Forum circle um, has EVMOS in its portfolio. And we just got through seeing how it's going to be used with XLR to be a side chain for XRP. Isn't that just, doesn't that just blow your mind? <laughs> blow yeah, your no mind. doubt. Yeah. Um, so, so now that brings us kind of all full circle to um, XRP or, or over to uh, LCX to uh, conclude the show. Does anyone have any questions here on what we presented about Swift? I did see a few questions. Um, so we already answered this one about Axelar, but in regards to Swift related, um, I did see this come up and um, I do want to welcome this guy, Chris. Chagnon, if I'm pronouncing it right. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right, sir. Uh, by the way, I do recognize your avatar. Welcome back. He says, how is a company like that not for profit? I think he was referring to what I found in regards to um, some of the key findings with uh, Mitri. Oh, <laughs> um, I could go into that. I don't know that you guys want me to go into that. Um, we can say I, that I for another that. day. We, we covered a lot already. But, um, yeah, that will be another deep dive for another day. And I'm sure – now that we, you know, kind of gave you a taste of the rabbit hole, I mean, there, there's got to be something more, you know, there. I mean, especially with some of those mentions about China, we understand that, you know, there's these big connections for um, SWIFT blockchain, SWIFT coin when it comes to, you know, the BRICS nations. And Ru really talked a lot about India. Um, we talked about some of these other connections with China. So that was that was pretty cool. Uh, XLR is just going to be the bridge. Um, so the way I, I figured that this would work is that uh, XRP would come over. XRP is going to be the gas token. Um, and you're going to be able to use uh, EVMOS to build on as like a side chain. So instead of uh, people who wanted to build on from, from what uh, David Schwartz just said, Instead of building on XRP, which might take a year or more, they can build on EVMOS with it being an Ethereum um, 
virtual machine, they can build on that and have it just be like, you know, two months because of salinity. Um, and, and XLR is going to be the bridge there to bring over the XRP. So XLR is just, just the bridge. And um, EVMOS is the actual just uh, blockchain they're going to be developing on to kind of have access to XRP. Now, the only thing that this kind of brings up a question about is how will this affect the chain like Corium, which Corium says that they're going to be, you know, bridging Cosmos and um, XRP. So how does this affect Corium? That's that's a really good question there. That and I, I can't tell you. I would think that Corium and um, what is it? Uh, Sologenic have their own deals through uh, Fireblocks and, and other people. So um, I would think that, you know, they, they have their own deal set up, but this is going to be another Cosmos like connector that's this completely separate from Corium to XRP. Great research, my friend. Some of you guys asked what cold storage solution I use. I use this, and it is the Decent Wallet, all right? I also, of course, have a ledger uh, like this, all right? You can get a discount, basically, from going into the affiliate link, which is in all the live video descriptions and recorded and so on. And for the Yahoo's that are out there, they're like, this is just a shield. And, you know, we'll fix point this out. And it's a great point. Were you aware that you don't necessarily get a discount link just going straight to the site? No, you actually have to go through a platform like this. So how cool is that? You know, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. But anyway, use the link, get a discount. There's another one here. If you're the type of person you want to get one for your, you and your, you know, significant other, uh, you can get two of them. They, have a, they actually have another promotion, which is this. And I think this is cool. You can get an all-in-one card wallet plus backup card package. Interesting. I thought that was cool. And again, one of the main key things I like about the Decent Wallet is not having to do the, the red tape of, you know, jumping through all the hoops for XDC and the custom folder. I mean, Edward Vincent can vouch on that. Some of you guys can too as well in regards to Ledger. That was a pain in the butt. You don't have that problem. You literally open up your phone it's on your app track everything that's going on right and you know same goes not your keys not your crypto you know the drill check it all out though if you wish to do so it is truly the cold storage solution that i use for the most part there's still some on ledger that you know i kind of split it up on it and so on so it is what it is but if i have preference over one i'm going with this one a lot easier to use and so on and some people even to this day still ask me which one to use. Yeah.